Welcome back everyone. Today's video is about uh, a question I received, I believe it was on another one of my R Markdown videos. And it was about how to do some more of the customized uh, typesetting with LaTeX, but all written within R Studio and using R Markdown. So because R Markdown uh, goes through Pandoc, you can include arbitrary amounts of LaTeX code in amidst your Markdown syntax. Um, also with HTML, with and you, you can mix so many different languages using different language engines within R Markdown. Uh, it's a very flexible environment. If you need like really high grade typesetting, uh, sometimes just doing pure LaTeX might just be the better you know use. And using um, R Studio and Sweeve, you can actually write LaTeX with embedded R code. I'm sure there's a LaTeX package to do code, but as for actually like executing the results passing that into the LaTeX document and displaying that. Um, there is Sweeve built into RStudio, and I'll give like a brief overview of that in a little bit. But as for like the nature of this question, what I got was uh, I wanna add some packages and use some things and specify in my preamble for my R Markdown document, going to PDF, which means it goes through um, LaTeX and it gets um, compiled with LaTeX. And I want to actually have it um, customized. I want to I want to use some packages, use some functions that aren't just with the basic tiny tech package. Or if you have a full distribution of LaTeX on your system, you need to have a way of defining items in your preamble for use in your R Markdown document upon compilation. So how do we do this? So in R Markdown, um, I just open up a blank document and I put in a couple items but your output is gonna be a PDF document and the YAML actually needs to be indented another, another level. And then the PDF document gets a colon and inside this it includes in header and the name of your document. Now, if you have it in the same directory, you can just name the file. If you have it in a subdirectory, you would do the file path, but it will be a ordinary dot tech package. I mean, I'm not sure if that's standard convention or not. Uh, this is just what I tested out and it worked just fine. Um, and so in my tiny tech uh, preamble, I just have, I don't have begin or end document. I just have a list of like the typesetting I'm gonna do, use packages, uh, renew uh, command, new command, um, change or define things and whatnot. And so in this document, I already compiled it and by default, it'll look like this. It just displays some, you know, the typical default output of an R Markdown document. Now, I did include two packages in this, and that's to-do notes, which is something cool that I like, where it makes it apparent that you have to-dos left to do in your document. Um, and then just blind text is just inserting chunks of lorem ipsum. So if I, do, if I just ran this, it would compile as normal. But if I remove the comments, so I'm calling the blind text function, which would drop a paragraph of lorem ipsum in here. Um, if I try to knit that, I'll get an error down here in the bottom. Yeah, it undefined, it can't find the blind text function. Um, so it would be the same result if I uncommented this and the to do function along with whatever text is in there. So if I go back to my preamble and I remove those comments, save it. So now it's actually going to source this uh, preamble before it compiles the rest of this. It's going to add all those things, your use packages, your new commands, your, your renewed commands, and all the stuff that typically goes in a preamble will get processed before the main document, which means it will now expose the blind text and the to-do functions for use in your document upon compilation. So now if I knit this document, it doesn't give me an error because it finds it, it's in the preamble. unless our studio decides to crash during a live video. Of course it would. Uh, all right, let's restart our studio. All right, take two. <laughs> all right, we have the preamble set. We have the functions called, we're going to knit. It's not going to shut down on me. <laughs> there we go. Good boy. All right. So we have the lorem ipsum text. It is in here. So it was embedded inside a paragraph already. And it has inserted that. And then it has the to do placed where the to do function was called with the text in the to do function. So that is how you would integrate a 
preamble with LaTeX. And because this is going through Pandoc and LaTeX compilation, pretty much, I'm, I'm sure that most of your use cases could be solved by utilizing the preamble to define all of your like nitty gritty typesetting and still using, like you can see in the document, I'm still using the R code chunks. I'm still using the typical markdown syntax. I have my YAML header and that's already like three different languages we're using. Uh, we got markdown, we got YAML, we got um, LaTeX. I mean, plain text, if you want to count that, but then we could also throw in, you know, if I commented out something earlier, you know, there's a HTML comment because Markdown is basically just simplified HTML. And you could put like div tags and other things into our studio or um, our Markdown documents and have HTML embedded in here. You could have CSS code chunks that affect the output of these documents if you're going to HTML. Uh, again, you can use so many different languages just natively in here because it's running through Pandoc, as well as all of the like 30 plus language engines that you have available to actually do processing. Like you can even do um, like bash commands in here. If I was gonna do like, I think it's just sh, uh, print my working directory, bam, there we go. So you can actually do, if you were more familiar with some of the command line options or you just wanted to have the functionality of some of those bash commands, there you go. You could run a couple of those, have it, I'm sure there's a code chunk option to actually have it display an output um, variable and like assign that to something like you can with some of the SQL code chunks and then have all of your bash stuff run, you know, grep, awk, sed, whatever, and then have that go into a data frame and then do some R stuff with it. Um, you can use that. So getting back to the main point. So we got uh, the preamble working and it can compile a LaTeX document and we can run our R code the way we are normally doing and have it into a nice looking document. Great. What if you wanted to write primarily high grade LaTeX code and just have little bits of R code dropped into it? That's where we might want to consider using Sweeve. So let me close all these things here. Now, be forewarned, I have not done a lot with Sweeve because I just write LaTeX or I would just write R Markdown. Um, I haven't really had a use case to really dive into Sweeve too heavily, but um, if I remember correctly, I think the code chunks or something like that, or no, it was like double. Yes, that's what it was. And then what was the ending chunk? I forget. Let's look that up. Do, 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 do. It's a little weird of a code chunk, but um, so I use those double, there we go, and then the equal sign, and then the at symbol is the termination. Okay, now I remember. Interesting. Yeah, not really syntax I'm used to using. So there we go, and then the terminator. All right, and then let's do something like ggplot to diamonds. Yeah, why not? And then, so the way you would actually name your code chunks, you can see my cat over there. Um, the way you would name your code chunks is in these two, the, the middle angle brackets, you could type out, um, this is the diamonds data set. If I could type. Um, and then if I did my uh, preview, it would actually, just like how in an R Markdown document, it would actually put that chunk in here. And I think if you actually started doing your, um, like begin document, if we actually started adding some structure, like the sections, subsections, et cetera, that it might actually add it to that as well. Uh, let's test. Yes. So if you started adding like your document outline with sections and code chunks, it would work exactly as you would it would with, um, a normal R Markdown document. Uh, let's add use package blind text. And then let's just add some blind text in here so it looks a little bit filled up. Doo, doo, 
do. All right, so now we have some Loctec code. We have this weird little syntax right there, um, the opening the code chunk, the you know name of it. I'm sure there's another, like you, you can add your code chunk options. You're running our code here. Um, and then the termination is the at symbol. Really weird syntax for me. I've never really written anything with this, but this is a way of sticking to LaTeX primarily if that's where you're super strong and comfortable and just dropping in some R code analysis. Um, I'm not sure if it uses the other language engines or not. Again, not super familiar with Sweeve, uh, but there we go. So let's compile this and see what, it, what we got. We got an article class. We're only, we're only using the blind text package and then it has Sweeve opts. I'm sure that's just for like some compatibility to make sure that it runs as it should. Delete that extra brace, that one too. All right, so we got blind text, spit out the diamonds data set, and blind text, and then the end of the document. Let's compile. I'm committing the cardinal sin and leaving a space in my file name. Mm, it's not under pat. Let's see, <laughs> it won't even let me do it. Good, excellent. All right, so <laughs> let me resave the document here. Uh, there we go. All right, now you compile. It's compiling over here. All right, so now we have output. We got lorem mipsum, we got a tibble, so which is why it only gives me the first 10 rows, which is good, because otherwise we'd have millions of pages of just a day of table that's not even formatted. And then we have um, more lorem ipsum, and that is how you would use um, just mostly LaTeX code with some R chunks embedded into it, uh, just to you know fiddle around with some text processing. So that is how to like take advantage of LaTeX resources, typesetting, uh, preambles with R Markdown, or just dropping R code to be executed inside of a LaTeX document using Sweeve. Um, I might get into this more and explain more. It depends on like the demand. Like if you guys are really like wanting more information about this, I'll dive into it more and look at it myself. Um, but I don't really use Sweeve. I just typically write R Markdown, or in this case, would write LaTeX. Um, I could see the use case of doing Sweeve because then you could get your really nice typesetting and put your code right there and have it execute and have your output and you know great. Um, but thus far, I have not really had a use for it at this point. I can see the value. If you want me to do more on this, just let me know. Uh, like post in the comments below. But um, Yes, how to leverage LaTeX in RStudio. All right, well, until next time.